Hello, it's Ricardo, and I'm here with another episode of Reboot and Restart, where I start Elite Dangerous again using another Steam account. So today, we're going to take a look at the Sidewinder. That good old staple ship. The Mini Metro of the Elite ship world. Now, love it or hate it, we've all got to go through or endure owning a Sidewinder. Some people race them. Some people like flying around them. Because they're really, really cheap. They cost on average 32,000 credits for most space stations. And around 29,000 at Founders. So let's take a look. Now that Sidewinder Mark 1 is built by Falcon de Lacy. And it's a little multi-purpose ship that we all start off with. I've already said this. It's cheap. I've said that, and it can be used for light transport. Well, you've got no choice when you're starting off in the game, if you let's face it. Most pilots, if not all pilots, will tend to love their Sidewinder at one stage of the game. It's the good old faithful. It's manoeuvrable, so you can learn to fly in it. And also, some experienced pilots can really throw it around. It's quite a dependable vessel, and it's dispensable as well, given its financial attribute. Now, you can buy these little beauties virtually anywhere. And when you buy the farm and you've run out of cash, it's what you go back to. Now, looking around the cockpit, it's all tubes with Jubilee clips. It's the bare bones. You know, it is the L model of the motor car world. You know, it is basic. It's a bit like it's a bit like a 2CV, that old French mainstay of cheap motoring. You've got the bare minimum to operate, the bare minimum to survive. But you've got good visibility and it's functional. Now, could you click the old subscribe and the like button and check out the notification icon if you're enjoying what you're seeing. And that'll let you know when I'm putting more videos of Elite Dangerous and other games and check out my other channel. Ricardo's epic battles as well. Okay, so, you know, I mean, okay, it's cheap and it's small, but it's by no means harmless. And it comes top of maneuverability due to its size. I mean, looking around the cockpit, it is functional. You've got your little cargo racks on the side. You know, there's not a hell of a lot of space. And therefore, you know, it's quite an acceptable ship. It's a bit like bringing a knife to a gunfight, though, you know? I mean, it, it lacks the punch. You've only got two weapon slots. And there's small weapon slots at that. But, you know, everyone should have one. Parked in a little station, in a garage somewhere. You know what I mean? It, 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 it's That's what you need. Now, in default configuration, in normal cruise mode, you're going to knock up around 161 meters per second. All right? Four pips the engines, 221. Okay? So you're hardly motoring, but it's hardly slow either. Hitting the boost, and you get right up there to, I think that was about 301 to 302. We'll do it again just to make sure. Let it all calm down. There you go. That's default. And boost. Once it charges. 307 I saw that speedometer go up to. So it's hardly slow. But be warned. You can't stay at boost. You're going to need to get an engine upgrade. You need to get it over to the engineers. Now I've stuck um, a class A power plant on this in advance. And my rebuy is about 6,000. But generally, when I started off in the game, in the beginning of the reboot and restart, the rebuy was knocking on 50 credits. So they're expecting you to plant it in the side of a station wall. Now, I briefly mentioned the weaponry, and you get two hard points, and they're small hard points on the top section of the ship. Now, you're not going to do a hell of a lot of damage. Sticking four pips to the weapons will let you fire a little longer. But you know what? Heat is not your friend here. So you may want to consider putting a heat sink configuration in your utility slots. 
as you can see the vents are opening here pretty quickly you know yeah you're not gonna you're not gonna wear any walls with this but you know yeah you're, you're not gonna roll over either so every player starts as a member of the old pilots federation after being notified of a successful membership a secret benefactor right then has a transmission delivered to you with a code right it gives you access to a starship account that's pre-configured with your credentials and this is all from the elite law this is how you gain an indefinitely loaned and insured sidewinder and then behind that windfall is the whole story of a secret organization which seeks those with the potential to become elite and that's the story behind it, especially from the old 1984 game. You know, it's a very acceptable ship, but let's look at configuration. So I mentioned utility mounts. What are you gonna put there really? You know, it's gonna have to be a heat sink. Okay, it's gonna have to be a heat sink and possibly a kill warrant scanner if you actually do kill anything in it. Point defense, well, I think it's quick enough perhaps to go out running any any missiles. It's certainly maneuverable enough to go out running any missiles. So I think heat sinks are the answer. I wouldn't go taking on any Thargoids in it, put it that way. Look at the core internals. So you can upgrade your alloys, that's going to make it heavier. Power plant, like I mentioned, you're going to have to stick a bigger power plant in there. By default, you've only got 6.4 megawatts. Well, that's hardly appropriate is it you're gonna need something a little more substantial than that a 2a1 at founders is gonna set you back 140,000 credits but you have got slightly discounted rates here by about 10 percent now if you want to go for jump range then look for that d rated power plant it's gonna give you a little bit extra zip in the capacitors and it's gonna you know lighten the ship a little bit all d modules are lighter same with thrusters thrusters obviously increase your top speed go for d for lighter thrusters for that little bit of extra boost it's all completely up to you the boost speed i say by default is 321 meters per second by default when we saw it it got about 307. That might have been because of the great big honking frame, sh uh, frame shift drive I had knocking on the ship. So putting two A thrusters on it as well is going to give you an extra little bit of zip. I mean, once you start making money, you have to look at upgrading the frame shift to get a few good trades in. An A rated is going to set you back about 140,000 credits plus 10%. Okay, so 154,000, give or take. Power distributors as well. How quickly your capacitors recharge for your shields, for your weapons, um, for your engines. Sensors, well, with sensors, I tend to go for D-rated sensors, to be perfectly honest with you, uh, and don't go for the A-rated stuff. They're lighter, and it certainly, you know, helps from the, the E-rated you originally get. Now your shield generate as well, that's going to stop you getting zapped and incurring too much damage. I tend to go for an A-rated shield generator in a small ship like this. It gives you a little bit of a fighting chance, at least when you're being pounded by other ships of this level. I don't tend to mess around with bi-weave shield generators and all the rest of it. Go for a standard A-rated shield generator in this, and I think you can't go too wrong. It is going to incur a little bit of extra weight though. As for discovery scanners, well, you're going to be jumping around some systems. And I thought long and hard about this, but I did tend to go for an advanced discovery scanner. This is expensive, and you're probably not going to be able to afford that straight off the bat. However, if you want to go prospecting and exploring and work on that explorer rank, then you're going to need one, really. But to be fair, in a ship like this, it's a bit of a waste. Make sure you've got as many cargo racks as you can to maximize your cargo throughput. How much can you carry? That's going to also have an impact on how far you can jump. Don't forget when you get to the stations, refuel and repair everything. So you don't get caught a cropper by someone who's going to do you in when you get outside the station. Now look at paint jobs. I was fortunate enough on my other account to have the mercenary paint job and also the Black Friday paint job, which does set it off a little bit more than the norm. It does make your box kite 
look a little bit better. Now, of course, you can customize this if you've got the cash at the Old Frontier store. Like anything, if you want to be personal, it costs the dollar. So if you want to and you love that Sidewinder and you want to embellish it a little bit more, make it a little bit personal, head on over to the Frontier store and pick something. There's a wide old range of Sidewinder paraphernalia or adjustments. There is a 16 point ship kit you can add to it as well. Um, I'm not sure if that's actually worth it. Doesn't give any additional benefit within the game. However, you know, it does make it look a little bit better or more ridiculous, depending on which side of the fence you come down. Now I've named my sidewinder the Baby Badger. You know what I'm like for my badgers. So there you go, and I've put the nameplate on the side of the ship. Hard points. We've been dodging this. There's no two ways about it. You got two, like I mentioned. Everything else, we've kind of upgraded what we wanted, and that's where we are. Just look how small that ship is on the landing pad. We get so used to our big ships as you progress through the game. So moving outside now, let's test out some of those modules and see how fast we can actually get this thing going. So as you progress through the game, obviously you can engineer these modules, but hey, we're cruising at the moment. 228, hit the boost. 246, I'm gonna call it, 246 on that. It's about right, isn't it? And of course the recharge as well, what with the power distributor is quicker. So boosting up now with all the pips of the engines. There you go. I think we got into the 300s. Let's do it again. We get a better sound. Boost. But 322, I think, was the maximum we had there. 322. Not so bad. So let's take a look outside there and take a look what it's like when you fire your old weapons. So, as you remember, Power distribute has been upgraded. Let's see how long we can fire and what the heat problems are. So, get the lasers out. Look at those pulse lasers fire. Death by a thousand cuts. Now soon we're going to see that the vents are starting to open. As the capacitance drops on the weapons. There you go. Firing's got a bit more sporadic. Okay, so heading on back to the old station. That was our look at the Sidewinder. Maneuverability. You know, it is what it is. It's quite maneuverable because it's so small. You've got a fuel capacity of two tons. You can get to those small landing pads. Two utility mounts, two small hard points. And a jump range. Maximum jump range, about 24 light years. I've been Ricardo. This has been Reboot and Restart. Thanks for watching. Check back for more in the series.